All right, we got two different builds to showcase today. We have a Sork and we have a Forge Guard. The Sork we'll go over first because what I've been doing, I've been trying to go over every mastery to get a fundamental understanding of each mastery and see which ones are stronger fundamentally, which ones are weaker. Uh, some have more stats in their passive trees. Some have more mechanics in their passive trees. And the design philosophy behind them is very interesting to kind of digest and divest. The older masteries all have more stats in their passive trees, while the newer classes and the newer masteries such as Warlock, such as Falconer, you can clearly tell how flexible they are, how viable all their different skills are in a multitude of different ways. There's like 50 different ways to just play uh, Chthonic Fissure, like that shit is crazy. However, when you want to make a Sork build that uses Meteor and you don't want to use Uniques yet, let me tell you, it is a rough time. It's a rough time. So I wanted to make Meteor work because I'm one of the kinds of people, you tell me something doesn't work and I'm like, but how bad is it though? Can I make it viable though? That sounds fun. That sounds like a challenge. So my friend told me Meteor is not great. Never felt as good as um, Static Orb, never felt as good as Glacier. And so I came into it. And I was like, okay, here, let's uh, let's test it out. And um, I'm a little laggy there, weird. And so you kind of get over like 400 mana and then you make uh, a few come down and you only cast Meteor above 400 mana and then it always crits. And then you get as much crit multi as possible. It just doesn't feel that great. Actually, I think the, so this belt is actually, it's a Meteor belt that makes you cast Meteor on crit sometimes. And that Meteor doesn't actually refund its mana cost as well from a very specific node, uh, this node right here, where you recover 48% of the mana cost over three seconds. But you can only recover mana from one Meteor cast during those three seconds as well. So it's not useful to spam a bunch. You just have to cast once every three seconds, basically. And it's not bad. If you have a lot of move speed, the play style is pretty, like, I don't even need the 100% crit chance. It doesn't affect our uh, total DPS at all. Um, yeah, it's just kind of whack, though. Like, it works perfectly fine. I can keep scaling up. I can keep scaling up mana. I can keep doing all that good stuff. But it just doesn't, you know what I mean? There's no mechanics. It's just wait for mana go above certain point win lots of mana cast meteor it's not that fun there's a couple things so i wanted to make a like a ragnarok build where you're just summoning a tons of meteors uh but black hole summons meteors but this meteor that it creates it doesn't it doesn't really use the meteor skill tree it's it's like weird it does but it doesn't meanwhile you see some skills like static orb and you're like holy hell like crit multi like it gets increased damage per like certain amount of crit multi and then like you do damage per 20 max mana like that shit's crazy so it has direct mana scaling it has crit multi into normal damage scaling so if you just scale your mana and the mana cost, you get a ton of increased damage, and then you just get crit multi affixes instead of increased damage affixes, and then that scales multiplicative damage at a really good ratio. And that's just, that's just like, th that's just three nodes on this entire skill tree. Anyways, you have Meteor, and it's like, you want stun Meteor? Good. You want more mana back? Not that much though. You want more fall speed? Yes. You want more Meteor? Yes, you want more Meteor, yes. And then you want guaranteed crit, very good note. And then you want some crit multi, yes. Is there any scaling? No, <laughs> it's just kind of confusing. You kind of get like the simplistic feel from the Sorcerer Mastery and it doesn't really feel, it doesn't really feel good. Now, obviously it's one of the oldest Masteries in the game and I totally understand that. They're probably gonna pass back over it to be honest i'm pretty sure the same way that they passed back over like uh ice thorns and replaced it with gathering storm on primalist they're likely gonna do with every base class or they're likely gonna do with like every mastery and like black hole is apparently one of the oldest skills in the game and this tree sucks balls oh my god don't even bother you can make it work 
It's not gonna feel good though. I guarantee you it's not going to feel good. I experimented every single note on this tree. None of it really feels all that great. And Black Hole, I don't think it has any specific uniques either. But again, I'm not playing with uniques right now because a skill shouldn't require a unique to be viable. Like, like minimum possibly viable. You know what I mean? Like 200 corruption in Empowered Timeline status viable. Like, that's just... That's just my thoughts on that though. Anyways, same thing with Forge Guard. Now Forge Guard, I've played many different kinds of Forge Guard. I love the Sentinel class and the Forge Guard specifically just kind of <laughs> tickles my fantasy, like role playing a little bit, you know, I don't know why. It's just like a super blacksmith. So I've played Forge Strike builds. I've played Smelter's Wrath builds. You can do good damage. You can do really good like damage with Forge Strike specifically and you get the forged weapons. It kind of goes bonkers. P people sleep on it, especially when you come over here and you use a two-hander node and you grab all of the Molten Infusion, everything over here. You can make your Forge weapons and also your Manifest Armor deal a ton of damage. But again, that's the only way I've really found success without uniques on Forge Guard. Now we have Shield Throw, we have Manifest Armor, we have Ring of Shields, Smelter's Wrath. Smelter's Wrath, of course, um, it's like you can make it deal damage. It scales pretty high, but it never really scales that much it doesn't have any crazy synergies and so for this mastery specifically i wanted to try out using sigin's reprisal now this is the shield throw retaliation build it's side, sort of like a damage reflected build here's what i have to say it's apparent that they don't want that they haven't put enough damage reflection or like passive play styles into the game yet because percent damage reflection it actually we can see it we can hover over here uh, damage reflection percentage reflects a percentage of the damage you take. It's not based off of the initial hit pre-mitigation and you still take the damage that you reflect, right? So if you're like blocking, if you take zero damage somehow, the enemies take zero damage, even if you have a million percent damage reflection percentage. And it's only realistic to get around like maybe 300% damage reflection. Uh, now, the idols that give damage reflection, they give it to your minions as well as you at, on the same affix. So if you have like, you know, 12 forged weapons and a damage reflection manifest armor, it's probably gonna deal decent damage. Probably gonna deal decent damage, uh, especially if a boss is like AOEing something down or something like that. Like there is that play style, you can probably do decently well with it, but it takes a lot, it takes a lot. And also the flat damage reflected to attackers, the numbers just aren't that high and there isn't enough synergies in the game with it. But Sigin's Reprisal is a step in that direction. Now, this is really good. This unique is actually very, very, very good. And here, we'll just, we'll just show it, we'll just show it off. Now I'm level 67, so it's not that, it's not that deep. It's not that deep, it's just, I realize the only way to really scale this build up is to scale flat damage reflection so that we get more uh, flat throwing damage essentially for shield throw. And actually shield throw has a ton of damage multiplier nodes up here. And there's also a uh, crit multi per 100% block effectiveness. Now this, if we just look naturally, it's gonna give us 7% crit multi. It's not that great, it's not that great. Um, however, shield throw has the uniqueness that the more it ricochets, the more damage it's dealing. So uh, you can never make it ricochet off of yourself, I don't believe. This node specifically that makes it uh, can target allies so that you like hit an enemy and then they ally and then it just bounces between them really quickly. This uh, does not apply to you, it says specifically uh, other than yourself. So you need to have an ally uh, if you're a loner, um, and that's your forge guard, you're going to have a forge guard companion so that on bosses you actually have, uh, so that you're actually able to deal good amounts of single target damage and we get additional shield throw ricochets. So shield bash is actually the highest damage multiplier for shield throw outside of itself. And then we just kind of like, we're doing stun and sustain and, uh, yeah, yeah. And so we'll we'll see how we'll see how that all works right here. It's um, it's like an odd playstyle. It's just weird. It's like a, an active passive playstyle. We're at a lot of block a lot of the time. 
Uh, it's pretty fun, I would say, but it's not particularly good. Like, like if it seems good, don't let it fool you. <laughs> That's all I would say. Here, here. Let, let's let's check it out. Why? I'm not sure why it's. See, it's kind of a like. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I actually, I'm not sure where the damage comes from. Okay. I'm just gonna be 100% honest. I'm just like not sure because Shield Bash actually gives you like higher block chance and uh, the retaliation is based off of when you block specifically. And so if you like, I don't know, it's not, it's not as good as it looks, okay? I don't know why it's dealing damage. It's not, it's not like if you take the time and <laughs> get perfectly statted gear god damn it i was trying to show off that it's like not that good <laughs> but it, i i keep forgetting that it's actually not bad i just don't like it it's not the worst i just don't like it if you have at least one shred armor on hit with throwing attacks you then you don't need to grab these nodes over here for hammer throw armor shred and because all you do are hits it actually of course, because it's all throwing attacks, you can make it like an auto smiter. And so because you uh, auto retaliate shield throws, which are throwing attacks, you can have like a true auto smiter build where you just walk and block and shield bash is like your main skill. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> the biggest problem with Forge Guard is the second half of its passive tree is so trash, okay? It's trash. Like you can do bleed forge strike, you can do minion forge strike, and that's pretty much the two most viable ways to play. <sighs> so even with 300% damage reflection like we just got here, let's just like kind of stand still. You can see we actually have decent damage reflection and it's like, it's just not, they just, it's not that much damage. It's not great, right? Damage reflection, even with 300%, and that's pretty much as much as you can get if you get like perfectly statted damage reflection, it just doesn't do that much. And so you don't really want to do percent damage reflection. All you want to do is stack flat so that it actually gives you throwing attack damage on this build specifically. I guess the best part about the shield throw is how much like armor you get. Here, I'll leave the stat window open so that you can see. Here, let's try to take out this exiled mage. We don't do damage, I swear to God. We do not do, this is not good damage, okay? You know what we're gonna do? We'll go to the ending the storm because that's the area we're actually supposed to be in. So let's check this out, okay. I need to prove that it doesn't do good damage, okay? I'm not trying to mislead people. I've, I'm gonna prove it doesn't do good damage right here. I'm just gonna prove it, all right? I'll prove it. Killing Lagan, I literally started the Lagan fight and I was like, no, thank you. This is going to take a while. So you can check out our armor there. Um, it jumps up a lot when you start blocking a lot and shield throw. Uh, you can make it give you even more armor than this. I'm not even really trying, but anything after like 70% damage reduction with armor doesn't really do much. And also, yeah, I don't think there's any way to see your health, like your active health uh, with that screen open. So that's like I have the confidence to play in hardcore and just show that off because of how tanky the build actually is, especially in massive amounts of units. You're not gonna die to a mass amount of small units with this build. You would only really die with um, with like one big blast, kind of like that. But I mean, if you've been hit with a lot of small hits before, oh, like this? Yeah, see that? Almost died right there. Like you see, it's not, it's not that special though. It's not that special. I swear to God, it's not that good. I swear to God, it's not very good. All right. Look, see, you see that? Like this is the actual damage, okay? I, I tried to make it work as best as possible. I don't actually want to use uniques besides this because, because you know, um, what I stated way earlier in the video, like in general, I, I just, it doesn't, it just doesn't feel good. Like these are probably the best idols that you can get for this kind of build where you can get 
300 plus block effectiveness. That's going to be three crit multi if you get that one shield throw node and then throwing attack crit multi at the same time. But again, like if if they wanted to make shield throw viable in the late game, they would buff this up by like <laughs> by like a thousand percent. Yeah, like this needs to 10x. All right. It needs to be 100 block to 10 percent crit multi effectiveness pretty much before uh it would feel like really good to play and actually be like oh hey we can use this also they need to change this node so that it can target yourself but it doesn't grant armor to yourself that's all they need to do that's all they need to do and then shield throw is a decent fucking skill and then it would be completely viable in the way that like i'm trying to build it right now it has a few other viable setups but if you're thinking about this way where it's like I'm just, I do shield throw, I do shield bash, I do shield rush, and then some hammers. <laughs> uh, that's not, <clears throat> yeah, it's not very viable. So, so that's it. I hope this helps showcase like everything that's really going down uh, with Forge Guard and Sork. They just, they're kind of uh, lagging behind in terms of mechanics in their skill trees. They're kind of lagging behind in terms of like build versatility and like build, um, flexibility i guess you could say and like the interconnectedness of mechanics and skills uh that reflect like the archetype of the class not to mention that the passive bonuses yeah anyways okay yeah that's it i'm out of here peace